What's up, everybody? Welcome back. In part eight, we're going to start getting the rear suspension designed. But before we do, let's talk a little about this rear. The whole assembly is mounted in a cage that could be dropped in its entirety to be serviced. And after spending some time on this one, I can see why. It's packaged pretty tight and dropping the whole assembly seems like a straightforward way to get to servicing it. One of the obvious standout features are the four coilovers, but then you have the inboard brakes with four, yes, four single piston calipers. It's basically one small caliper on each side of the rotors. What stuck out to me the most were the upper control arms, or lack of upper control arms. This thing is using half shafts for double duty. They're responsible for rotating the tires as well as acting like an upper control arm to hold the whole assembly together. It's pretty interesting. I stripped the entire assembly down to just the differential. Then, I spent a bit of time measuring and triple checking the placement. The mount is pretty straightforward, so I whipped up a quick sketch in Fusion 360 and this is what we ended up with. Okay, moving along. Let's work on the trail arm mounts and links. Like always, it starts with a sketch, and yes, sometimes they are pretty crude sketches. I just make sure that I get my dimensions right in Fusion, and the final part should be accurate. Over to the CNC, and you know the rest. Here's a pro tip for you. Don't overthink your materials when it comes to mock-ups. In this case, I'm just using some old PVC in place of steel. I'll use larger diameter as placeholders for the half shaft and this smaller stuff for the trail arms. Check out these reverse threads. It's common to use opposing threads on links so that they can be adjusted without having to remove hardware. And now the moment of truth. And it fits. Now, it's time to move on to the lower airbag mounts. The plan here is to make a simple mount that'll support the weight of the jet and look good doing it. After measuring it out, I think the plan of attack will be to have a simple plate that rests on the end of the Jaguar lower control arms. Then, I'll reinforce it by going underneath with additional supports. For this, once again, I take advantage of Fusion 360's canvas feature. Basically, I'll start with an image of an existing control arm and a ruler on it. Then I'll import it into Fusion, scale it and start designing. Once I'm happy with it, I'll export it from Fusion to the CNC and I'll let the plasma cutter do its magic.
After some minor modifications to the control arms and some prep, it all gets welded together. Slow and steady wins this race. I am not trying to warp any parts and risk having to start over. Cool, I'm happy with that. Now, let's get to the upper bag mounts. I start by loading up the specs from the airbags we got. Then, once again, I use that canvas feature to build my parts. Within a few minutes, this is what I have. Then, I whipped up some simple tabs for the shocks and tacked them on. All right, it looks like this is gonna work out. And that's a wrap for this episode. Be sure to stay tuned in for upcoming videos where I'll be working on two areas of importance. One will be the adapter that mounts the jet body to the chassis I fabricated, and the other will be the turbine housing. Make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe, and all those other things to make the algorithm happy.